to another episode of Let's Talk Fortitude. Hey, before we get started, I'd like to give a quick shout out to uh, Pale Horse Coffee. Um, not doing a full blown ad today, but we just do want to, because what we're doing today is, is a little different. I uh, uh, also like to give a quick shout out to Forerunner Productions, to Chad and his crew, and all that they do for us. And also, uh, Jason Hubbard and the Cheesecake, uh, Cremoso Cheesecake Company. You can find those folks. On YouTube, uh, or not YouTube, but Facebook, check them out, and we're going to get started, because I'm excited about this. This has been on a docket for a while now, and um, we're here with Matt and Sarah Behringer, who is getting ready. We're going to talk about this a little bit. Here in a week, we'll be celebrating uh, an anniversary um, that, that this hunt has a uh, another special little thing now, and uh, that, that was a great story when you told us that. Anyway, Matt and Sarah put on a hunt um, here at the Sawtooth. Y'all call this the Sawtooth? Sawtooth Oak Farm. Salt. Say that four times. <laughs> Sawtooth Oak Farms. And uh, before we get into that side of it, um, anybody that's went back, you can go back and see. I interviewed Matt's dad, um, that talked about BRS um, and their history of your company, and it, which is amazing. I mean, that's just it, it's. You, and your dad's a great interview, and they were so you, you all. Uh, for anybody that doesn't know, it takes forever <laughs> to set this stuff up, and I and uh, you all have been so gracious and patient on it with us getting all this set up to do this. It is an honor and a pleasure. To, to be here to do this. When, let's just go ahead and do it this way. I, we just let things roll. So we really, we found out about the hunt actually through Jason Hubbard, who you, you have dealings with through work. Yeah. <laughs> and, and he introduced us and that put me with your dad uh, your dad's a, a military veteran, and that's kind of what we had focused this on, but we've, we've kind of made adjustments. So when we came up to do that, and we learned more about this hunt. The hunt, it wasn't planned. This this happened through Brent. Yeah. Correct? Give us a little bit of a hit, because this, how many did you say this is now? 15. Year 15. 15 years. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit about Brent and how this got started. Brent, uh, he was my first cousin, and when he was, I think, three, four. four years old, he was diagnosed with a brain tumor, and it was really bad. And uh, they ended up doing surgery on him and did not think that Brent was going to survive surgery. They called all the family in and said, you know, this probably ain't going to make it. And <clears throat> when Brent came out of surgery, um, he had to learn to walk again and learn how to talk again completely, just like a like an infant. And Brent uh, overcome the 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 cancer. And uh, as Brent got older, he was he was slow. He wasn't uh, you know he wasn't capable of of doing the things that his you know his siblings did and and we did as cousins. But he he wanted to he wanted to do he tried to do. Uh, but he loved deer hunting. And he, I mean, he loved it like nobody's business. And uh, we would take him deer hunting every year. Uh, me and my brother and, and maybe another cousin would take him deer hunting two or three times a year. And uh, it, it was just, he couldn't get enough of it. So whenever it got to the point where, where he, uh, he wanted to hunt more than I could take him or my brother could take him, then we started getting our friends involved and said, you know, will you take Brent hunting one day a week for this month? And and we got about four or five other of our friends together, and they would take Brent hunting. And this went on for for years. Um, Brent Brent lived to be 30, Three. 33 years old. Wow. Uh, he died seventeen years ago. Yeah. Seventeen years ago. And when he died it kind of left us with a void because we had all committed to taking him hunting and helping him get into woods and, and helping him kill deer. And, you know, there was somewhat of a void there. And we helped with a handicap hunt in South Carolina 
uh, we had a lease down there, and there was a young man that lived there close to that lease who was who was in a wheelchair, and we got to know Julian Omer, and he came over to our hunting camp one day and said, "Listen, I've got a some handicapped friends coming in this weekend to to do a hunt. Would you guys be willing to help guide?" And we went down there to hunt ourselves. So we said, absolutely. So uh, while we were there that weekend, we gave up our weekend of hunting to take them. And it really it really set, set something off inside of us. And uh, Julian said, listen, why don't y'all do a hunt sometime? And then we started, it just started from there. And uh, the, the first year we had six or seven hunters. Julian was one of them. And very little to no sponsors. Uh, and it just Two grew. Sponsors. <laughs> Two sponsors. Two sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> and it just grew from that. It's just it's it's crazy how 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 many hunters we have now and how it's how it's done. Now well, and it's not it's not just for the physically handicapped either. So tell us about who all what what the, the tell us about some of your hunters and their you know their challenges or you know that they the handicaps that they have. Um, the challenges range, they could be blind, um, they have PTSD, um, diabetes, you know, you know, serious diabetes. Um, we have a hunter that has the same condition that, um, Andre Giant had. Really? Very big and progressively, uh, getting blinder, more blind, you know. Um, so it's a wide range, but for instance, she walks and talks and no problem there, but hunting is a challenge and her guide, you know, they use things like night vision. Um, they'll do things with sip and puff where they blow in a straw like thing and it fires for them. That's so, awesome. Yeah. And we have, you know, paralyzed. Waist down, paralyzed, neck down. Totally Everybody's... paralyzed from, from the waist down, and they can use their head to maneuver their gun left and right, and then when they get it on the deer, then they blow through a straw, and it will make that solenoid pull the trigger on that gun. That is amazing. Yeah. That, there's, that, this is, see, I had no idea. I mean, you know, we, we've talked some, you know, in preparation for this. But I think it's just like, tell it. you were telling us about a young man that, that draws for you or it sent you a picture of the day that we were up here. Remember? Um, Hunter Adcock? I believe so. Tell us a little bit about it because I know that he had a special place for me. He he, he hunts with you. With, he does. He comes to the hunt, correct? Yeah. He does. And he uh, draws or something. He draws and he has a page on, on Facebook where he sells his art and 75% of the proceeds go to our hunt or hands of a sportsman or sportsman handicap hunter hunts um and you can choose where you want your proceeds to go um but he would come each year and he would bring me an art and i didn't understand that he was selling it i just knew that he always brought it well so when i found out he was selling i started buying I'm, most of my christmas presents this year are from <laughs> him <laughs> um and he does our opening prayer he's going to do our opening prayer this year and if you ever hear him pray it is the best thing that you will ever see. And last year, I announced it's time for the prayer. Everybody bow your heads, hats off, whatnot. Everybody listened for once. And he said the prayer, and as soon as it was finished, tears, of course. And I said, please tell me somebody got that on video. And they were all, you said hats off, heads bowed. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I did ask him back this year for the opening prayer. Actually, he did not get drawn as a hunter and I called his I contacted his mom and asked if he'd be willing to do she asked him he's excited about it um and then a hunter had to drop out wasn't able to make it so we were able to substitute him in anyway awesome. since he was going to pack up and come up here I hated for him not to be hunting but we didn't have the opening and it came up it came open we'll make sure we put that link in the uh, description below so that uh so you can go back and check that out Make sure you do that. I mean, this, this is awesome what this guy does. We'll make sure we get that link in. Okay. So, since you mentioned about the draw, I mean, not everybody gets to come and hunt. No. I mean, it's a, it's a lottery system, basically, type deal where you have to, 
You put your name in that, and it's drawn out. Tell us a little bit about how you how you all done it and, and, and why you had to do that. I'm sure you couldn't. There's no way you could have everybody come in and hunt the ones. Well, we pretty much determined that the farm and the facilities here will accommodate about 65 hunters for parking and food and motels. Uh, we put them up in motels, probably five or six different motels. Most motels only have one, two, maybe three handicap rooms. So we've got every handicap room within 20 miles of here yeah. booked uh, for the, the two hunts that we do a year, the turkey hunt and the deer hunt. <clears throat> Usually we'll have a lottery draw. We'll let them sign up the entire month of August. Mm -hmm. After that, then we'll do a lottery pull and pull 50 hunters out. Uh, and those are strictly picked by lottery. And then I keep me about 15 hunters that I that I want to get into the hunt. Uh, some of them are terminally ill. Um, many, several times we've gotten people on a hunt because this was we knew that was going to be their last their last year that they're ever going to deer hunt again, and they knew it. So we bring those people in as special guests, and I'll I'll keep me about. 15 special guests that I'll personally invite that are not part of the lottery pool. And when we do the lottery, we might not know who they are, but people come, they come, they reach out to us through Facebook or, or whatever to give us their situation. And they hit, they know Matt and, and hit him up about it. But you get that, that child that's had a life altering illness or accident or whatever, you get that child in the hunt. Stage four cancer, not necessarily going to make it to January. You get them in to hunt, and God puts those people in our in our path. I did an interview, or not an interview. I did a, like a, a pre-interview for like what we did with you guys when we came in here after after your dad's podcast. And he's a teacher in Rock Hill. Um. They're friends with <clears throat> a family who has an 11-year-old girl that's dying of liver cancer. Mm -hmm. So when you when you say that you hold those tickets back, man, that's you can't you can't make that up. You, you have a heart to do what you're doing, or you don't. That's 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 God given. God put that. That's a servant's that's a servant's heart that God put in you. Uh, that you're wanting to carry on something that started with your first cousin that meant that much to you. And you, because when you see, and I, I, I'm so excited for next weekend because <clears throat> when you see the joy that that you guys are bringing to people by doing this, and because you were, we we're going to talk about these chairs that Matt and I are sitting in here in a minute. Uh, but I've watched some of the videos. These guys come in, man, they controls. They've got that deer dragging behind their track chair. I'm like, that is awesome, man. So when you, when you see, let me stop. I'm getting, I'm getting ahead of myself here now. So we've talked about how you go about deciding who hunts. But those hunts would not be possible without your guides. No. So let's talk about your guides a little bit and, and how those are, because those, not everybody guides either. Because I come in, and I, I'm out there, I, I think, well, I'll take somebody. I mean, I hunt. I mean, I was born in the woods. I mean, I was six, seven years old going through the woods in West Virginia with a shotgun. If you do that today, they're going to lock you up somewhere. Um, but then you also look, John, the, not all these hunts are right here. These are all over the area. So <laughs> tell me about that. Um, I also put a link out in August for the guides because we like to know who wants to guide. And we don't assume since they've been here every year they're coming back. But these guys, they put corn out all fall. They prep the spot. They've got a camera out there. They see what's coming, what's going. They, it's, and they leave it virtually unhunted, untouched. It's almost like it's a competition now between each guide that their hunter kills the biggest deer for the weekend. And we got 65 hunters. Um, we'll, we'll skin probably anywhere from 55 to 80 deer on a on a three hunt period a friday morning hunt or a friday afternoon hunt saturday morning saturday afternoon so it's three hunts that they'll go on 
and and they'll take home they'll they'll probably kill sixty or seventy deer. I'd say this this next weekend. And you'll hear the guides out here saying, "Oh man, you're going with him. You ain't going to see nothing," you know. <laughs> <laughs> but they really they work hard. They put heaters in the blinds. They call their hunter. They friend them on Facebook. They're sending them text messages of pictures that they see. They're creating that bond. And we didn't know this, but one of the young ladies, because not all your guides are male. No, we got we got girl guides. Um, Girls can kill deer too. Well, yeah. Listen, we're we're, we're I'm sitting here amongst a legend now. You know what I'm saying? This is the deer slayer, dude. But Olivia, we didn't know this. Chad went to school with, went to high school with Olivia, mm -hmm. and he's going to actually go out with her. or so supposed to go out with her uh, to film the hunt. We'll see how that goes. Now Chad's an accomplished. I mean, he's he's put a few on her. He's put a few down himself. So he's he's an experienced hunter. It's not like he's an old city slicker going, <laughs> going to go to Academy Sports and pick him up a set of camos and then go out. So he's. Uh, I thought about bringing my ground blind up here and setting it up and then doing. Maybe some of the interviews inside the ground blind and uh, kind of make that be a little something. But um, the unique th the unique thing about Olivia is Olivia's uncle had cancer last year and he was not uh, picked for the hunt. Well, uh, his her her daddy Chandis called me and said, Matt, my brother's got cancer and we don't expect him to live. Is there any way you can get him worked into your hunt? That's one of said, those. Absolutely. That's one of those. <clears throat> he he hunted one time and killed a deer. A big deer. A big deer. <laughs> he came up here and he won a gun at one of our raffles, and we lost him three weeks ago. He died. He died three weeks ago. He did kill another deer a month ago, and then he died. I think about a week later after he killed his second deer. He'd been hunting twice and killed two deer. Well, the <clears throat> we got his deer mounted in like two weeks. Um, the taxidermist did a real speed job because we knew his time was limited. And to make sure he saw it, if we could. And he won the gun. They came and sighted in the gun and went hunting. So he actually got his latest deer with the gun that he won here. It was the first time he shot it. And now um, we've added him to our memorial banner that we, unfortunately, has to get bigger every so yeah, often. Yeah, that's, uh, I'm sure that's, that has to hurt. I mean, it's, you feel well, good at the same time, but it, but it still hurts when you lose somebody. Well, Chandis was here yesterday whenever we were getting ready for the guide meeting, and he worked really hard here all day yesterday. Well, we had to put up our, in remembrance of those that we lost too soon from last year to this year, and we unrolled it, and he seen his, his brother's name on there, and just, he just started immediately crying. He had no idea that we got his brother's name on the banner. Yeah, I lost my uh, sister this year, colon cancer. Yeah. So it's uh, it's a real thing. Yeah. And what you're doing is just because, I mean, what you're doing, including those folks, is, I mean, your heart. I just keep, gotta, I just keep going back to the heart that you guys have and what you're doing. So how far away... Do your hunters and your and your guides come? What's the furthest away um, you had? An hour? Uh, they, maybe an hour and fifteen minutes or so. They a couple of them actually go into South Carolina. Um, most of them are within fifteen or twenty minutes of of here at the farm, but they're hunting the absolute greatest spots. I mean, they hunt land that normally doesn't get hunted. Maybe a property owner, you know, really don't have any hunters in their family and they like watching deer. They, they see a, a wheelchair person come on their place and they're hooked from that day forward. They open their farm up for, for handicaps. That one regularly. weekend a year. Yeah. You want to take a break? You okay? No, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> we, it's not a lie. We can I take cry. a break. But I, I want to tell you what. Your dad's podcast, is the only podcast that I've shown or shot that hasn't somebody hasn't got emotional in it. Really? Yeah. I mean, and that's not that's not a jab at your dad. Yeah. Because he's stoic. <laughs> well, I mean, there's only one cried for bear. When he here. goes places to me, he's like, Sarah, are you gonna cry again? <laughs> but I'm gonna tell you why. I'm just gonna talk about your dad for a minute. When I look at what of him on Facebook and what he does, there 
you're the heart that I don't know what your siblings are like, but the heart that your mom and dad have, that's very evident as well. So it, the, it, you know, the apple doesn't fall very far from the tree. And, uh, and that's a great, hopefully that's a great honor to Miss Ruby and Mr. Brad that, uh, I, but this is, so if you had, have you had anybody from out of state that's ever applied? I mean, not I mean, other than North or South Carolina. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, we got them coming from California. Well, we had one that signed up from California this year, but he had to drop out, I believe. He but was. Tennessee, um, West Virginia, um, New York. Kentucky. Kentucky. Yeah, they come from all over. Yeah. All over. Wow. And when we first started this hunt, the state of North Carolina required us to have to get them a three-day hunting permit. Uh, and that was costing us like $120 per hunter. Well, the um, the commissioners had heard about our hunt and seen what was going on with our hunt and in turn went back to uh, North Carolina Wildlife Resource Commission and got got it where we could, not only us, but other handicapped hunts could, could apply for hunter license exemption forms. So now we don't have to buy a license. These hunters uh, get a free license by the state of North Carolina for being involved in a sanctioned hunt, uh, which we are sanctioned through the NWTF. That's who we we, we work through. Uh, and it's called the Wheeling Sportsman Program. Uh, so that's kind of who we piggyback on to be able to make this hunt possible. Well, that's, I mean, they ought to do something. I mean, what you're doing is absolutely incredible. Um, so, so we've talked about the guys, talked about the, the hunters a little bit, and we, we can go back there if we want to, but we're sitting in a couple of chairs here. And so when Chad and I first met you guys, you were on the phone with a lady because you was getting ready to write a check for a chair. Oh. <laughs> and, and you're like, man, do I write it or not? We just don't know what this lady's going to do. And she came through, didn't she? She did. So tell us about a little bit about the chairs that we're sitting in. Um, this chair is custom for one of our hunters that we love. Um, he doesn't know it yet, uh, but his guide took him, and we asked his guide last year, would one of these chairs benefit him? And his, his guide said, you know, he needs something for every day. And we went through this company, that company, whatever, getting quotes, and and we ended up uh, going through new motion, and this chair was more expensive than our other chairs and wasn't something that we could do alone. So we teamed up with Hands of a Sportsman and Sportsman's Hearts out of Wahlberg. Uh, it's, it's a new one. They just started last year. Both of those two organizations spun off of our hunt here. Oh, cool. Both of those two uh, started their own hunts, uh, one in Wahlberg and one here in Salisbury area. And their and people guide here with us. But um, And Sportsman's Heart guided the chair, guided the hunter that's going to get this chair. And um, so we teamed up all three of us and split it in thirds to be able to award him that chair this year. And in the last, uh, I guess we probably gave our first chair, track chair away. We had we had proceeds left after the hunt because of the community had, had donated so much money. Well, we needed, we had to do something with the money. And we thought about buying a track chair and giving it to a kid. So uh, we did that. And we, we presented that kid with the track chair the night of the hunt, the Saturday night of the hunt. And... Uh, you know, there was tears. That was 2016, I think. Was that the first one that we'd given Because one? that was my first hunt. I had just met you, and I didn't know what this was about. And I said, well, I hope we don't break up because I'm going to have to keep coming back because I love this. <laughs> <laughs> but since then, we've given five chairs away. This year, the Action Track Chair people are bringing two brand-new chairs in from Virginia. There was a lady that it got involved in our hunt that uh, has asked to, to remain anonymous. She wrote a check for a chair of $13,000. Uh, 
for a chair like I'm sitting in. We wrote a check for one. So we're going to give two track chairs away. We're going to give that chair away next Saturday night. And then we've got another chair that was donated that is about a four or $5,000 chair that is in perfect mint condition that somebody heard about us and what we did and drove it here from the East Coast somewhere and dropped it off and said, here, y'all find a new owner for this, like a $5,000 chair. So... We'll be giving four chairs out this next Saturday night. So it'll be So a, ugly crying is on the docket. There will be crying. <laughs> <laughs> that is so that's that's awesome. So so total, how many chairs have you given away? Including the three this weekend or four this weekend. Five before this weekend and then four more this weekend, so it'll be it'll be nine. Now on top of that, now listen, I'm I'm one of the most critical people of the government ever was. But tell us about the program that you're going to have that where you're actually getting our tax dollars actually doing something that I agree with, where they're bringing chairs in for you all to use. Yeah, they have uh, the state of North Carolina, the Wildlife Commission has lifting blinds, uh, and these are hydraulic lifting blinds, and I don't know how many they've got, six or seven of them throughout the state. And these are, are, are hydraulically ran. They're pulled behind a tag-along trailer, and you can get wheelchair people in them, two or three people. They're big boxes with roofs and windows in them, and they hydraulically raise up to get that hunter a, a, a feeling of being in a deer stand because they've hunted on the ground their whole life because they're in wheelchairs. Well, along with those, they actually have these track chairs, uh, and they'll, they'll bring those track chairs to our hunt. Uh, we'll get probably six or seven of them that we'll have the weekend of our hunt that our, all of our hunters that need them can have them, along with the ones that we've already given out to the hunters that, that were the recipients of them. And the East Coast Track Chairs, where we purchase our track chairs, is bringing one that they have that was used for us to also loan it out this weekend. When they bring our two new ones, they're they're bringing a used one out for somebody to borrow this weekend as well. I tell you what, y'all might get a bigger charging station over here. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I, think you're, uh, I think you've outgrown your capacity already. That, that's incredible. So, how many people over the years have stayed in contact with you and come back each year? I mean, is it a is it a large Every number year. of people yeah. that, that keep coming back? Once they come yeah. in, they're like, I'm hooked. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, my daughter, uh, she did it. She did it for her um, senior project that they had to do over the course of four years during high school. And she takes off for it at work, and she's now in college. If she sees that she's going to have class on a day, she goes to her professors and takes it off. Um his best friend's daughter she's here you know we have i have a couple girlfriends and, and we're here and they've been here already they were here last night for the guide meeting we've been in the basement sorting shirts they've been finding things online and and hitting up people for donations of hot hands or beef jerkies you know just right yeah so it's it's a number and i couldn't put a number on it but it's it's a lot in our community they might not be here but they they might have to work whatever their case is, but they make sure that they send food, desserts. We eat really good, and it's because of our community. Our we don't spend a lot of money on food. Thankfully, the chicken is donated. The, the Boston butts. Boston butts are donated. All the sides, um, soups and stews and every all of that is donated because our community and our community of friends. Um, that support this hunt. Of course, you couldn't have this hunt and not eat deer meat. <laughs> <laughs> we cook our share of deer meat. That or pig. Yeah. yeah well, I mean, see, I was on a mission. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So now, you you talked about how you had to start out with two sponsors. If I'm not mistaken, I saw on Facebook where you're going down the sleeves this year. Did you get that far to where you had so many that uh, you didn't. had to start putting the putting the, the putting them down the sleeves? Oh, you talking about the, the, the sponsors the, the like shirt on the back sponsors. of the shirt? Not yeah. yet, um, but on the back of these hoodies, this, these are this year's hoodies. 
um, they have the sponsors from this year. Our gun sponsors alone was 62, and that is 500 or more. Some of those 500, some of those gun sponsors are 1,500, 2,000, you know. Um, but a gun sponsor is 500 or more. It puts you on the gun tickets and on the back of the shirts. And then shirt sponsors are $100 a piece. Um, and I, they're full. And every year our T-shirt lady has to, you know, <laughs> Figured out, and uh, and we said, you know, it might end up on the sleeves later, <laughs> which is it's just a blessing in and of itself. So let's talk about that for a minute. This and that, this is something else that really intrigued me is you do one gun a day for thirty days leading up to the hunt. Talk about that and how that all started, and 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 the people who participate in that, and the the guns and how they're. The sponsorships, and I mean, this is incredible how that the, works. The local Shriners had been doing this 30-30 gun raffle for quite a few years. And a good friend of mine, Bryant Rowland, was was in the Shriners, and he said, yeah, we should, we should try that. So <clears throat> we bought 31 guns, and then we asked if anybody would like to sponsor a gun at $500 each. I think the first year we may have had 10 people that sponsored, so we had to buy the other 21 guns. And then 10 people bought guns that were, were actually gun sponsors. Now we had 65 gun sponsors for 31 guns, which doubles the amount of money. But we sold 1,000 tickets this year in eight hours. The, the day that we had 1,000 tickets that went on sale, they were sold in eight hours. Uh, and it, when we started doing this three or four years ago, it took a month to sell all the tickets. Now they now they get going and yeah. And next year day. I gotta make sure that uh, I guess I might have to stand in line up here <laughs> you, at the office to you, get them. I guess <laughs> you gotta be at BRS at five. I was there at five a.m. Uh, but I also we used to let people take four packs and sell them, and now we said one pack. You can take one pack per person. A pack of ten uh, for the first week. If they were left over at the end of the week, you know, come back and get another pack. They were not. Uh, but I also took payments via Venmo and Cash App so people that were at work could call and say, hey, put my name and number on them, here's my money, you know. I had cramps in my hand writing out tickets. So did, when you do that, do you have to buy all 10 or can you buy just a single ticket? One. It, One it ticket. Matter. Okay. 1,000 tickets at $35 each is what we do. And every morning at 5 a.m. or plus or minus, when I get to the office, I'll have one of my employees pull a ticket out, and we'll post it on Facebook. Uh, and it, you know, we'll we'll do a shout out to a gun sponsor. Um, a lot of the sponsors are local people, and we really stress for people to do business with our gun sponsors. Uh, and just so everybody knows, who's watching this. All North Carolina rules, firearm rules, and regulations and laws were followed oh, yeah, through yeah, all this. Yeah. So don't think we're just out here throwing out guns to people that, you know, no, no that's no. they have to go to a gun shop and pick everything yeah. up and get all their paperwork done. So. Yeah. The guns, uh, we don't ever hold the guns. The person wins the gun, they go to the gun shop and have to do all the proper paperwork with the gun dealer to get their guns and take them home with them. We talked about your spot, the gun sponsors. Now, you have a taxidermist that does your taxidermy work for these guys. Do, do they? Does he do all the mounts for all the kills? No, there's about or, four it's a or lot five of taxidermists. Taxidermist. And so, each year, oh, okay. it's and it might be this. We have a group that's always the same that always do them, and then each year more taxidermists hear about it and they'll say, "Hey, let me." Um, donate a shoulder mount. And if they do that, I'll put them as a gun sponsor because, I mean, it it's, costs, an it's, it's an in kind sponsor of $500 each. It's yeah, because tax service is not cheap this day. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. That is not. And we, we have some taxidermists that if we have the case with the stage four cancer, they will whip it around. You know, others, they get it through to us throughout the year and we give it to them at the next year's hunt, something like that which is fine, totally normal. Um, but we do have some that if the pressure's on, as far as, you know, if this hunter gonna make it, they will get it out. And I can attest, I mean, I've, I had a brother-in-law that did taxidermy, the ex-brother-in-law. I know the time and the effort that it takes to do one mount. 
And it's not something you sit down and do in a 24-hour period. I mean, there. I mean, it's it's incredible. And to make it look like something. Yeah, and they know, don't slap it together. It's it's good work. Yeah, because it's, it's. I mean, there's. When he would show me some of the stuff, how he would, how he would put the. He put glue on the nose to give all the you know the rippling effect and it's stuff. It's kind of crazy. And the eyes, and I'm like, man, I don't. But he was an artist. I mean, he was a he was he was a gifted artist, and so that's what you have to do if you're going to do that. I couldn't do it. So let's talk about. You talked about how you had cheer wine, or there was going to be some trailers coming in. Yeah, cheer wine. Uh, they'll bring two trailers. Um, you know, like the concession stand, enclosed type of trailers with the lift-up doors. And we have drinks and raffle tickets in one, and we have T-shirts and raffle tickets in the other. Now, these raffle tickets, they're different than the gun. So that's, that's stuff that don't anybody think that it's, it's the, those are gone, yeah. long gone. Been gone. <laughs> so, um, now, you also have a DJ that comes in. Do you have a DJ again this year that's mm -hmm. coming in? And yeah. he announces the the guys when they come in with their keel and stuff. Yeah. And make it a big deal for these for yeah. these kids, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, he, he'll play music in between, and he'll put Matt or myself, we'll be on the mic um, as the hunters come in, calling them in. And you just, when they're coming up, you, you're thinking, who is that? Who is that? Because you don't want to ask their name. And you pull their name somehow of all these hunters. You pull their name from your pocket. <laughs> and and when they come up, you're like, oh, Jenna, what you got there? You know, and they 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 are like, they know me. You know, I, they, I this is my day. I'm winning. I, they're cheering they're the for me. They're the center of attention for that, for that few minutes that they pull in here with a doe or a a yearling or a big buck that's just there to total center of attention. If it's their first deer they've ever killed, then we're going to bloody the, the person's face up. That's just a tradition that has went through every deer camp that I've ever <laughs> heard of. You take a little blood and you oh, bloody yeah. their face. So we really get a kick out of doing that when we have somebody that kills their first deer. He also cuts shirt tails. If they miss, we'll cut the shirt tail <laughs> off, which is also another tradition. In the coal mine, when you had a baby, it was tradition to cut the legs off your coveralls, and uh, and they wouldn't they wouldn't cut them, you know, all the way off. Well, there was a I had a cousin and a guy, another guy by the name Mike Tiller. They, man, they were pretty rough West Virginia boys, big dudes, six two, six four. Some old boy, newcomer, had a baby, and they were. He thought he was going to be big stuff and come at him, you know. You ain't doing that to me. He didn't have any clothes left by the time he got out <laughs> of the coal mine that day. So mm. that's that's a great tradition. We're not cutting anybody's clothes off anybody. So just <laughs> maybe a shirt tail or a little bloody on the face. That's <laughs> it. And the blood from the deer, it's not. They're not hitting anybody. So I'd like to turn this a little bit more personal now. Um, and you got a big surprise last year about this time. I did. Want to tell me about that or tell us all about that? Well, I was calling in deer, checking them in, taking pictures, you know, causing a ruckus. And I hear Matt call over the mic, Sarah, I need you up here. And I'm like, I got deer to call. <laughs> Leave the deer. Leave that. I'm like, I got deer. I come up here and we give away a track chair. And I am crying because it was beautiful. It's beautiful. And he said, well, I've got her ugly crying. I'm going to go ahead and do this now. And he turned around and got on a knee and asked me to marry him. I was like, oh. So I, of course, I said yes, you know. And he, so he says, everybody's applauding. He says, well, there's a, there's a kicker to this. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and he points, he, he, you know, motions to... Birdman, Kevin McCormick, our guide, um, who I had already decided if we ever got married, I wanted him to do it. And He's a Methodist minister. He Good said, friend of mine. He said, um, we got a preacher here. You want to go ahead and do it today? Well, 
Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we got married right here, right in front of this flag, with all of our hunters, most of our families, because they they didn't know what was happening. Um, and it was the most perfect wedding. I had blood on my boots, my Sperry boots, <laughs> because I was, you know, and we were wearing our hoodies, like our hunt hoodies, and we got married right here. He didn't even take a shower. <laughs> Nobody knew about it except me and the preacher. That, but you know what? It wasn't. I mean, that, that, you just said it's a perfect way. I mean, anybody that knows you now, I mean, I know you better now just through Facebook than when, when we first met. You told me the story. I can really see it now. You know, it was perfect. Matt looking for a part time <laughs> job for you from what seven a.m. tonight at night, nine you know nine p.m. No, you know? he wants it seven a.m. to ten a.m. <laughs> <laughs> and then 4.30 to 6.30. <laughs> He's got things for me to do the rest of that time. <laughs> she knows how to put a deer on the <laughs> She She definitely, yeah, she knows how to kill game. What have been some of the struggles, if you've had any real struggles over the years with the hunt, what would you say... Um, if you, if you, there may not be any. You know, yeah. we, we've made a lot of mistakes. Before Sarah and I were together, you know, I, I, I tried to do it. Basically, me and my brother John tried to do it, you know, ourselves. Mom and Dad would help as much as they could. Uh, my son and my daughter were involved. Um, and we've made a lot of mistakes. Uh, but we have learned from our mistakes, and we got better every year. And to be honest with you, I don't. We've never had anybody that got hurt. Knock on wood. Um, yeah, they may have their feelings hurt a little bit if they don't see a deer. But I mean, that's deer hunting, right? Uh, but we've we've been very blessed and very fortunate that that we hadn't had any any major obstacles whatsoever. Not a coronavirus. That's one thing. Uh, I want to was talk the, about. was a a big one for us. Um, we we made it very clear the first year that the coronavirus was here. Most everybody else canceled their hunts, uh, and we were one of the only ones that did it. And we told our hunters, "Listen, you don't even have to come to our farm. You can you can sit in a blind with you and a guide, or you and your uh, mom or dad or whatever. We'll get you in the woods." and isolate you if that's how you want it to be. We'll bring food to your motel room. Um, we'll open up the, uh, more tents uh, to get more social distance in here at the event for the, for the gatherings for food. And, you know, the, the people, they came, and I don't think we had one person that, that backed out because of the corona. And we they, had, were, um... they were really, a lot of these hunters, that's the only hunts they get a year or a few hunts like what we do. So or they had already had other ones that were canceled, and ours was the last resort. And we did it, and at the end of it, we were so thankful that we didn't back out. Well, and it's not just the hunt for these people. This is their social event. They, I mean, the hunting's one thing, but they get to gather and see people and... You know that's part of that's part of it, not just the hunting. Um, so we spread tents out. We used to kind of center it right here. Now we've spread it all the way out. Uh, we've closed the kitchen so that there's distance in the serving area uh, between each hunt. When they come and eat after hunting, and then they leave for either their evening hunt or the hotel. All of the tables, the tablecloths are stripped. All the chairs are sprayed down. Condiments are wiped down. Um, the hunters or the guides, nobody ever touches a plate. A gloved server creates the plate and hands it to them on their way out. Um, we got the to-go boxes so their guides could take it. Uh, it was a lot of adjustments, but it, it went great. We learned a lot from it. And a lot of the things we learned was like, ooh, this is kind of smooth like this. <laughs> <laughs> But we we um, we canceled our turkey hunt because it was so new. Uh, you know, it came out in March, and and that was April. And we just kind of didn't know. By December, we said, okay, we're doing this. And well, 
we started thinking about it in like June and July. And he and I said, okay, well, if we're going to do this, we need, and we just kind of kept a tally, a list of changes to make it possible and safe. And we didn't have a case that came out of here. That's now, awesome. I created all the social distance area. Mind you, the hunters did not use it. <laughs> but that's their choice. That's their you're right. choice. You know, that's that's you the way know. it ought to be. I mean, you know, if, if somebody wants to go over and get their plate and walk down there on the pond and eat with the ducks, that's up to them. If yep. somebody wants yep. to get next to somebody and rub elbows, that's up to them. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know? But that, that's why we live in America. We have a free choice, and that's the way it ought to be. Mm -hmm. in, my, in my opinion, that's, that's where we're at. And, I, and, and I'm just so thankful you all didn't give in. Yeah, we are a, too. We are too. It was an adjustment, but you still made it happen. You, life didn't stop for these people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even though, and that, that's what I hate about it is that people just want, it's like we're supposed to put our lives on hold and just stop. Life doesn't work that way. Life still goes on. I mean, we still have to live. And if you stop, you're not guaranteed next year. Exactly. Did you stop a year before you ran out of time? Exactly. <laughs> and you know, I, I just, I, I'm just, I have a, I try to get political on these things, and I just, I just feel like we live in America, a country of free choice for a reason. And uh, you know, I had the choice whether I got the flu shot or not before this happened, and I don't think this should be any different. Mm -hmm. That you know, if you and I'm not against anybody gets the vaccine if that's what they choose to do. We're in America. Hey, I'm all about it. But for those who don't want to get the vaccine, I don't think they should be looked down upon or looked at any less exactly. of, a, of, an, yeah. of a citizen as anybody else. Just like with, it shouldn't be treated any different than the flu shot. Yeah, that's where we're at. You, you do you. That's that's what and I'm be saying. happy. <laughs> yeah. This is um, my thing with with coming up here. And doing this is, yeah, I want to get some video next weekend to add to this, to what we're doing now. But if I don't get one minute, one second of any video, my whole purpose for coming up here is just to serve and to give back and to help in any way that I can. If it's picking up one rock at a time and taking it somewhere or blowing leaves or cleaning toilets or porta johns or cooking or serving or gar hauling garbage somewhere. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Wiping down tables, wiping down condiments. I don't care. You know, I, I'm blessed. You know, <clears throat> if, you, if you saw on Facebook, I just put out six ton of rock at my house with my old trusty wheelbarrow on the shelf. That's all I had. <laughs> and, um, and I'm thankful that I can do it. There are people who are going to be coming in here this, this coming weekend that don't have that ability. And uh, the wish that they had my body for one day, mm -hmm. that they can walk in that tree stand without riding in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I can get back, that's what I want to do. I want to get back. <clears throat> it's addictive, just so you know. The be prepared is. to cry. The I'm going to just go ahead and tell you that. Uh, you know... When you see these folks, it's the real deal. There's people aren't faking anything. Mm -mm. And, uh, you know, here's I've told this story before, I'm going to tell it again. And it's probably, probably a big part of the reason why I want to be up here. People ask me whenever I was in the ministry what part of the ministry I enjoyed the most or, or meant the most to me. Not really that I enjoyed it, but I, that meant the most to me. And it was when I did hospital and in-home visitation. And they look at me like, dude, are you nuts? Why? Because when you go to see somebody in the hospital that's dying of cancer or you go in to go to see a Ruth Johns who's stage four brain cancer not a hair on her head and when she comes to the door she looks like i mean i mean the way i just can't explain it i mean when you go to see those people you go to give you don't go to get anything and there was a lot of days that i felt guilty when i left because i felt more blessed than what i felt like i gave absolutely 
because I went and poured myself out and, and God's able to put something back in me. Yeah. It's no different than your leaf blower. You know, if you just put gas in it and never use it, the gas is going to go bad. Uh, we, people say your, your heart, your heart's in the right place and you give and you give and you give. At the end of the weekend, we have taken more from the hunt than any of the hunters. And you almost feel guilty. <laughs> <laughs> Even if they went home with a track chair or a 10 point, he and I on Sunday, after it's over, we're riding a high of how beautiful and how lucky, you know, we are to get to be a part of it. We get, I, I always say that we're way more blessed than the hunters. And the, the Sunday morning, or Sunday all day long, the hunters that will send us text messages and videos of them in the blind with their guide and and laughing and uh, putting blood on their face or just thanking us for the weekend or Bloopers. I mean it's just yeah it's just <laughs> text after text after text after call after call so so we cry on Sunday too yeah <laughs> well this has been a. Uh, have I left anything out that we should talk about that you all can think of? I don't want to, if it's a sponsor you'd like to talk about that's, that means a lot to you. You know, I would like to, but we have so many sponsors and they all mean so much. There's not, there's not one, you know, there's, there's not one because it doesn't take one. It takes the whole village to put this thing out. You know, I would hate to, I hate to call them out. I hate not to call them out, but without an actual list and, you know, it's like my volunteers. I would like to call names of my volunteers, but I dare not because I couldn't possibly call all their names and every one of them are special to me. I mean, I get texts from them throughout the year. Hey, when's turkey hunt? Hey, I found these for these hunters. It's it takes all year. It takes all year. Between an April turkey hunt and a December deer hunt, there's stuff going on all year long. Um, and those sponsors, <laughs> they say, well, you didn't call me and tell me to send you the money. I, and, and a lot of them say, you need to invoice me. And I told Matt, I said, okay, well, I just need to create a, a letter, send it out at about July. And I'm, I'm hoping that I move to that because a lot of them are scrambling. And they're like, oh, Sarah, you didn't call me. Or, Matt, why didn't y'all tell me? You know, and we know, you know, they want us they want us to nag them to give them money because they're forgetting. They're busy in their own lives. and think, But these people want to support this thing. And and that's, that's a blessing. And when everybody you, isn't on Facebook, but that is probably where we get, we, we get more pe connections people get connected with us because these handicapped folks they 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 are in their own communities um and a lot of it's online and they it, the word of mouth is just you know just goes from here to tennessee to georgia to florida when you are here next week for an example of the village that it takes you're a going to see the volunteers that are running around soups and stews night look and see how many pots of stew come in how many desserts come in on the second night? How many sides? How many desserts? When you look at our tables burgeoning with food, that was probably one person per dish. And all of those people thought about us to come up here and bring us a dish. Well, in my sister's honor, I don't know if y'all saw on Facebook, I made my very first Milky Way cake. I did. So I'll bring a couple of Milky Way cakes in That'd honor of my sister and, and her, you know, her with what she dealt with with cancer. And they're addictive. Oh, my gosh, they're addictive. <laughs> um, I, I, when I was making them, I'm like, there's no way this works. I'm leaving something out. There's, but, but when it got done, I'm like, man, this is it. And I was shocked. I, mean, I don't bake. My wife doesn't. So that was, <laughs> that, that was amazing. And I understand about you if you... 
the one person you do justice with, a few people you do justice in mentioning, you do an injustice to the one or two that you forget. And yeah. you just, you can't do it. There's no way. I never um, list them on Facebook. I never tag or, or anything because if I missed one, a, I would be heartbroken. And I want them all to know that they're important to me. Last year, I started a volunteer sign up. When they come, they sign up. And I sent every volunteer a thank you card. That's awesome. Because without them, even if we had guides and sponsor, sponsors and, you know, people donating food, without people to come here and run trash bags and and everything we do, I mean, your body hurts on Sunday. Without them, it couldn't go. Without any one piece of any of this, it couldn't go. It takes all those pieces. Well, now, when we get here next weekend, you'll have to kind of give me and Ken a little bit of a chat, a little bit of direction about who we need to talk to. I mean, it don't have to be you two. Just say, hey. Carly and Mary Stewart. Yep. And you, they'll be. You just, you just tell me who my boss is Bradford. while I'm here. Bradford. <laughs> well, so. this has been awesome. And thank you all so much for taking the time. Absolutely. And uh, I am so looking forward to next week. Um, I would like to give a, uh, what we will do, Chad, there's some mentions that uh, we're going to make sure we get in the, uh, in the uh, description. One is the young man that does the... Uh, Adcock. Hunter the, Adcock. Yeah, Hunter Adcock. And his Facebook page is Huggin Special Arts. And then... Every piece of art that he makes... He puts a thumbprint and a Bible verse. And I asked him, how do you pick the Bible verse? He said, God does that. <laughs> <laughs> and I spend, I spent money with him, and I'll call his mom and say, I need one of the, he'll post something, I need one of those. Hey, give me two. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a bunch up there in my cabinet because they're Christmas gifts this year because it supports a hunter. It blesses them with that Bible verse that that hunter gave to them. And he gives back to other disabled functions. That's awesome. So it's a three gift gift. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. And since we don't need a single thing, us and our family don't need a single thing. That's the way, that's the way Chad and I are. <laughs> we, we feel the same way. We're, you, you give those blessings where you can. Yeah, I mean, we're God's blessed me to the point I'm well beyond my needs. We are too. And, uh, you know, if you look around what we really want and what we need, uh, we could probably do with a whole lot of want, do without a whole lot of want. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Absolutely. So yeah, that's that's awesome. This has been a beautiful day. It's been overcast. We've had some pretty cool days here in North Carolina uh, the last few days, but it's a little chilly out there now. But it's not anything that's uncomfortable. My hands are a little cold. Next but, week's supposed to be great too. And that's um, I'm, I'm. We've had it snowing before, so. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to give a shout out to. Uh, Randy and Lucky at Old 18 Outfitters in Texas. It's a veteran-owned and operated outfitting company. Uh, uh, I got picked up a couple of rods uh, from them for up here, and uh, they're just veterans out there that's trying to make it. Uh, Randy's a 34-year Navy SEAL. Uh, Lucky flew planes on and off aircraft carriers and spent some time at the Navy Top Gun School, pilot school. And they have a rod maker, and they say you can... I haven't actually went on there. I haven't been able to find it, but they say there's a video in there where he actually puts the, the eyes on all the rods and everything. They say he's amazing. So anyway, everybody, we just want to thank you so much for joining us with this podcast and this episode. Thank you, Matt, sir, so much for taking the time and, and hosting us here uh, in Richland, North Carolina. Richville. Actually, we're Gold Hill. Gold Hill. Gold yeah. Hill. Gold Hill, 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 North Hill. Carolina. Gold and Hill. And it's like, it's like some of them towns in West Virginia. <laughs> Don't blink when you go through it. You done missed it. Boy. Yeah. But um, it's beautiful up here. I told Jack I'd love to sell my house and move out here somewhere. It's beautiful. I love this neighborhood. I'm just, I'm not a city guy. I mean, you saw the garden I'm putting in for my wife. I mean, we, we swore we weren't going to do that again. And I mean, now she's got valves. Separate valves for each one of the beds, and there's a main shutoff valve. I'm like, there's 170 acres for sale right across the road. We seen it this morning when we went to church. So. Wait till your mom, Chad. We may have to uh, come up and throw out a little bit on that. 
Everybody, thank you so much for joining Fortitude, or Let's Talk Fortitude. Ken, I want to give a shout out to my man, Ken Bonham. Ken's coming on board, going to help us with our audio video. We're trying to get him on the camera maybe one of these days, me and Jason better get him. Get him on. He's, hey, listen, if you sit down and have a conversation with the guy, he's awesome. He's a big car guy. I mean, if you talk cars with him, you're, that, that's over. Just sit back and listen. And um, Nigel, thank you so much for being here as well. Forerunner Productions, thank you for all that you do. God bless, and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome, Thank you. man.